Fun Facts presents the 1956 Chevrolet Corvette. This is a 50s classic car. This was the first generation produced between the years 1953 and 1962. I am excited. I love this body style. And let's get started now. The Chevy Corvette C1 is the first generation of the Corvette sports car produced by Chevrolet. <clears throat> it was introduced late in 1953 model year and produced through 1962. This generation is commonly referred to as the solid axle generation as the independent rear suspension did not appear until the 1963 Stingray. The Corvette was rushed into production for its debut model year to capitalize on enthusiastic public reaction to the concept vehicle, but expectations for the new model were largely unfulfilled. Reviews were mixed and sales fell short of expectations through the car's early years. The program was nearly canceled, but Chevrolet decided to make the necessary improvements. Harley Earl, as head of GM's styling section, was an avid fan of the sporting cars. He recognized that the GIs returning after serving overseas in the years following World War II were bringing home MGs, Jaguars, Alfa Romeos. In the years 1951, Nash Motors began selling an expensive two-seat sports car called the Nash Healy. That was made in partnership with the Italian designer Pin in Farina and British auto engineer Donald Healy but there were a few moderate priced models. Earl convinced GM that they needed to build an all-American two-seat sports car and with his special projects crew began working on the new car in late 1951. And the last time Chevrolet offered a two-door, two-passenger convertible roadster body style was in 1938 with the Chevrolet Master. The 1956 Corvette featured a new body with real glass roll-up windows and a more substantial convertible top. The straight six engine was dropped leaving only the 265 cubic inch 4.3 liter V8. Power ranged from 210 to 240 horsepower. The standard transmission remained the three speed manual with an optional power glide automatic. Other options included power assisted convertible top, a removable hard top, power windows, and a then leading edge signal-seeking, partially transistorized Delco car radio, and a high-performance camshaft was also available as the RPO449 with the 240 horsepower engine. The Chevrolet division was GM's entry-level marquee. Managers at GM were seriously considering shelving the Corvette project, leaving the Corvette to be little more than a footnote in automotive history, and would have done so if not for three important events. The first was the 1955 introduction of Chevrolet's first V8 engine since 1919, late in the model year. The new 195 horsepower 265 small block became available with a power glide automatic transmission. And until the middle of the production year, 
when a manual three-speed became available, coupled to a 3.55 to one ratio axle ratio, the only one offered. The engine was fitted with a single 2218S or a 2351S WCFB four barrel, four choke carburetor by Carter. The combination turned the rather anemic Corvette into a credible, if not outstanding, performer. The second was influenced of a Russian energy uh, in GM's engineering department, Zora Arkus Duntov. The third factor in the Corvette survival was Ford's introduction of the 1955 two-seat Thunderbird, which was billed as a personal luxury car and not a sports car. Even so, the Ford-Chevrolet rivalry in those days demanded that GM not appear to back down from the challenge. The original concept for the Corvette emblem incorporated an American flag into the design, but was changed well before production since associating the flag with a product was frowned upon. The end of the 1955 model year left Chevrolet executives questioning the direction in which they should take the Corvette. After all, they had addressed the issue of performance by introducing the small block V8 engine and a three-speed manual transmission as options for consumers to include in their cars. Still, the Corvette sales were far from expectations that GM required to consider a car successful in the marketplace. While some critics of the car were already reporting that the Corvette's demise was imminent, the reality of the situation was considerably different. One of General Motors' biggest competitors and arch enemies had launched the car campaign that seriously threatened Corvette's corner on the marketplace. It was, as we mentioned earlier, the Ford Thunderbird had met with resounding success, taking a firm foothold in the car market and providing without question that a car manufacturer could succeed by marketing a two-seat sports car. Although Ford chose to refer to the Thunderbird as a personal car, thereby avoiding the criticism that cars like the Corvette received from racing performance car purists. It was clear that the Corvette, for better or worse, was going to be Chevrolet's best shot at competing with the Thunderbird. But they also knew that despite its recent mechanical improvements, it required a makeover both cosmetic and functional to truly become a world-class contender. Truth be told, the 1950 through 53 through 55 Corvette was neither a serious performance sports car nor a small, fun-to-drive roadster that anyone could afford. Instead, it had gained a reputation as being an overpriced image car, though many questioned what that image was supposed to project. In addition, the car was prohibitively expensive with a price tag of approximately 3,500 US dollars. A Corvette cost nearly twice as much as a typical family sedan. As the 1956 model year approached, all of the items were brought into question. What could Chevrolet do to make the Corvette more appealing? What would it take to make the Corvette superior to the Ford Thunderbird in every aspect? As the Thunderbird had outsold the 1955 Corvette at a ratio of 23 to 1, this was the challenge that Chevrolet was prepared to commit their best resources to, ensuring that Corvette would never again fall short of its competition.
Okay, well, if you found yourself this far into the video, we'd certainly like to thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch our video. And if you like our video, please give us a thumbs up because it really will help our channel. And if you like our channel, please subscribe because we'll be doing all of the cars from the 50s and 60s, the concept cars, the muscle cars. We'll be doing later the hybrid cars and sports cars and supercars. We'll be featuring autoramas and car shows where there's hot rods and custom cars. So we'll look forward to seeing you when we upload our next video. And always, always, always take good care. Thank you.